Hi, I'm CJ Almerig with TransWest Trek Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. So we've got a new, or excuse me, a used Cimarron three horse living quarters behind me. So there's not a lot of used trailers out there on the market, especially kind of these, you know, 2015 or newer. Uh, this one here behind me is a 2018. So these are still products that you can still get financed. Uh, you always got to keep an eye on the age of these trailers when you're looking at them. But for our used inventory, this is a really nice piece here. It is a Cimarron. We are a new Cimarron dealer. So uh, we're big believers in this product. And I'll, and I'll show you. I mean, if I don't think if I pointed out this was a used trailer right off the get-go when we walked through it, you might think it's even a new trailer. I won't say it is like new. I don't like that term when we're looking at used trailers. It is a lightly used, still in good condition type of a trailer. And that's what we're looking at right here. So. Let's take a look at the drawing of this trailer before we get going here. That way we can see kind of how this trailer lays out itself. We actually have a, a, a gentleman <laughs> stepping in here right now, Anthony Gelvin with Cimarron walking into the video here. I'm not uh, mic'd up, but he's hello, not mic'd up. Good to see <laughs> you. We're going to walk through this trailer. So on the drawing itself, we're looking at 29.9 on the floor. So less than 30 foot. So this is a really easy trailer to maneuver around. Um, getting in and out of places, eight foot wide, seven, seven tall. Uh, what we've got is we've got a hay pot on this, drop windows head and tail side of it, uh, but a really nice, well set up living quarters that we'll walk you through. One of the, also the upgrades in the stall area is gonna be worm flooring. We'll talk more about that, folding rear tack on it, uh, a lot of manger storage. So uh, a lot of those items that we can get into. And, and again, we'll walk you through this trailer and take a look at that. now. It is a used living quarter. So on the living quarter side, we're a 15 and a half foot short wall with a slide out. That's the other cool thing on this is we've got a slide out on this trailer that we're gonna look at here. Uh, again, 15 and a half foot. That gives us multiple seating areas within this living quarters, a nice kitchen, full bathroom, uh, extremely well set up. So this is a Pro Star which is similar in today's market of a ProLine XP that you'd see from Outlaw Conversions. We're also an Outlaw Conversion dealer uh, with our Cimarron's, we put those in. So at the time, this was a model called a Pro Star. Um, that's no longer around. They've just kind of converted to the North Star and then also with our Outlaw Conversions. But again, let's walk you through this because again, this is a used trailer. I'll, I'll point out some different things as far as how it's equipped. Very first thing when we're looking underneath the gooseneck area, dual jacks. So because this is a slide out trailer, we go ahead and just put dual jacks on them. Makes a world of difference just from the stability standpoint. These are on individual switches as well. So we can kind of tip this trailer one way or the other. If you're not lined up directly underneath the gooseneck ball, when you go to hook it up, it's nice because I can manipulate those switches and set it, you know, kind of tip it one way or the other, getting it on the ball if we're not exactly square underneath there. Uh, we have two 20 pound bottles, LP bottles. Then we also have a aluminum battery box underneath here. It's gonna house dual batteries. And then also there's our on off switch, our battery disconnect so we can reach in here, turn that off, kill all power. As you are driving, you want that on the on position. And the reason why is then your, your truck will work as a trickle charger to these batteries as well. Um, but just go ahead and have that on the on position. But it's really nice to just go in and kill that in case you leave like a bathroom light on, a manger light, something like that. We're not draining batteries on this trailer itself. So out here on the outside, again, we're a 15 and a half foot short wall. So we have a four foot offset is the wall angle that we're talking about. So nice, big, massive awning on this side. The other cool thing is, is this is an automatic awning. So you just push a button, out it extends, push a button, back in it goes. So really easy to operate. Um, we're pretty much going that way, standard on all of them. We're kind of doing away with the manual awnings for that standpoint. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've got a camper style door going in. You also have the screen door. So you can have that main door open, just use, utilize that screen door, getting some fresh air in and out. And then you've got your step going in as a nice, easy, just transition as we work into this living quarters itself. All right. So as we walk in here, we'll just start at the front and kind of work our way back. So up in the nose, we've got a bed. It's a memory foam mattress. You've got 
some uh, closets up front there, so some additional storage, closets over to the side. And then you get into this kitchen area. A lot of counter space in this. Um, sometimes just depending on how it lays out with the slide out, some of these, you know, our cooktop and our kitchen sink are squished together and that's all the counter space you have. But as you can see, we've got a, a cover, a glass cover on a two burner cooktop right here. This also works as extra just counter space itself. You've got your sink with a lid on it, a cover, so that'll work. And then there's all this additional space here. So that's one of the big things is, is especially you get into the smaller footprint LQs, so smarter, shorter, uh, uh, short walls themselves, and the slide out, it gets really tough to get you some storage, but then also counter space. But as you can see, we've got additional counter uh, storage up above the actual sink there. You've got another cabinet up ahead of there. You've got pull out drawers here. So, you know, this has actually got quite a bit of storage for you as you're traveling. Then you've got a vent hood and then a microwave directly above that. And then behind me, we'll kind of transition over. Here's our large refrigerator and freezer. So this is a 6.0. They've gone to a 7.0 in today's world, but this is a 6.0 setup here. Separate fridge, separate freezer, which is really nice to be able to utilize all that space, take a little bit more food, you know, frozen items with you when you're traveling there and there, and then additional storage we're looking at ahead of that refrigerator. And then the last piece is a, a flat screen TV directly above that. So it's on an arm, it does swivel, so you can tip it one way or the other. Now, as we transition into the main part of the living quarters, you know, kind of the living space itself. This is cool. I love dual seating sleeping areas. So dinette over here and on the slide out, we have a sofa sleeper. So this guy here will break down into a bed, just folds down. It's a jackknife style, kind of like a futon. So this could be a bed area, seating area. The other cool thing is anytime we're building them for inventory and we have these multiple seating and sleeping, we like to have a couch with a dinette type of a uh, scenario for you. That way you can have a place to kind of lounge, but if you want to get up in the morning, have breakfast, you know, we're not having to worry about a table, anything like that. You know, this dinette's already set up for that, but this guy here will break down into a bed as well. So that's, what's really cool about this type of size and setup is you get these multiple, you know, sleeping and sitting areas here. This is an electric slide out. So typically in the hydraulic slides, on the back will be the water tank. Down here is just gonna be storage itself, uh, but a nice big access door. You can throw extra pillows, extra blankets, those type of items in there. And then across the gooseneck deck is actually the water tank that runs underneath those stairs over there. But because it's a, a electric slide versus the hydraulic, we need to relocate the water, um, but then it also sets that couch back into the slide. If this was a hydraulic and we had the water Behind it, this couch would be shoved out here into the slide out itself. Um, but the electric slides have come such a long ways. They're using them in campers, RVs quite a bit. Um, we've gotten along really, really well with them. The other thing is they're a little bit smaller footprint. So we don't have to have the big framing and bracing that we normally would on a hydraulic slide out. So it allows us to get a little bit more space and a little bit more storage with these electric slides. And then as you transition into the bathroom, one of the cool things is this pocket door. It just slides across. It's tucked into it actually in this pocket here between the walls. So that way we don't have a door. We have to swing one way or the other and work around. It just slides out of the way. You can keep it open, slide it across and lock it there. But this bathroom is nice and big. I mean, you can actually stand in front of the bathroom vanity, that sink, a lot of counter space there as well. You can stand there. You don't have to hover over a, a toilet, um, which is really nice to be able to do just to have that additional space. Again, a lot of storage, uh, again, counter space. That's the big thing when you get into this little bit bigger LQ is you get that. And then you've got your bathroom vanity up above there for storage. And then here at the back is going to be a closet, dual clothes rods back here. So you can actually take a lot of items with you um, traveling. That's always the big thing is, boy, do you have space in, in these these size trailers. You know, I mean, we're not looking at a 18, 20 footer by any means. Um, you know, it's, an, it's a 
it's a trailer that you can get around in very comfortably, uh, but you're not giving up a ton of storage. And that's what you have there. And then the last piece is a radius shower. You have a skylight. So if you're a little bit taller, uh, you know, you have a little bit more headroom You get that natural lighting in here, but there's plenty of elbow space. But again, a good size bathroom. It's That's one thing that we'll notice is sometimes there's a nice size living space and then you get in the bathroom and you're literally, you have no room to even extend your elbows. I mean, you're hitting something uh, anytime you turn around. But the other cool thing is you also have this pass-through door. So I'm standing in the stall area. There's an access door that I'll show you when we come out, but you can, you can literally come in, use this as a mudroom if you want, kick off dirty boots, dirty clothes, step right into the shower, and again, almost use this as a mudroom when you're transitioning into the living quarters rather than tracking everything in. But again, this is a, uh, it, again, it's a Pro Star model. That's how it was when it was built. But again, this is the same options, the same concept as their ProLine XP that you see in today's world. Uh, it is still an outlaw conversion, but it's it's a production model. So we have set floor plans, we have set color packages that we can go through. If you want to jump into an outlaw, then the sky's the limit. We can completely customize the layout, pick colors, you know, anything and everything you want to there. Then as we leave, right above the door is gonna be two hat racks right above there. It's just kind of wasted space. I give them credit for putting those up there. Uh, keeping things out of the way and a place for things to live. That's that's a that's an important piece when you're traveling in these trailers. Right here is actually the awning on in and out switch to roll that in and out. And then on the back side, here's your control for your slide out in and out. And then we'll talk a little bit more about this, but this has an Onan 4000 gas generator on board here. It's got about 271 hours on it. Uh, but that way you can fire that guy up. You don't have to have power. You can go anywhere you want. You can fire up air conditioners, do anything you want with the trailer itself. Um, and you don't have to be plugged into power. That is definitely a nice feature to have on this trailer. So again, you've got your awning, but you've got dual speakers out here. You've got a porch light, you've got a plug in. So if you wanted to plug items in out here, you can do that. And then the extrusion when this trailer was built was run all the way up to the, the nose area there. Uh, I like that look to the trailer. I think it, instead of it just being kind of all white, kind of looking like a refrigerator, we extend that up. It usually stops at the horse area, but we like doing that to our inventory pieces, you know, extend that uh, extrusion all the way up to the front there. Now on these used trailers, we haven't really talked about what we do to them here at Trans West. One of the very first things is we want to go ahead and get them washed make sure they're nice and clean. Uh, we'll take them to an acid wash. If it's a polish trailer, you don't acid wash those trailers. You citrus wash those, but we'll, you know, go ahead and clean out the stall area. We want to inspect the floor, make sure everything's good there. Um, but then we have two different shops. We have a household shop and a chassis shop. So on the household side, they're going to go through that living quarters. And w the best example that I can give you is if you go onto a lot and look at a used vehicle, would you rather them say, we think the previous owner changed the oil 3,000 miles ago. We don't know when he changed the fuel filter, last or air filter, those type of items. Or would you rather say, we got it here, we changed the oil, we rotated the tires, put a new fuel filter on it, put a new air filter on it, and an and an and. So that's what we do to the living quarter side of it. We'll go through, check water system, check everything safety, everything safety is automatic, but then we'll go through and we'll service that refrigerator, we'll service that furnace, we'll service that air conditioner. That way you know when you've come to buy it, it has all been serviced and you can go enjoy it. So then on the chassis side of things, same thing. Service that generator, go ahead and change the oil. Um, unless the customer literally walked in here and had it done through our shop about 10 hours previous on that generator, no, we'll go ahead and do it. Because a lot of times they really can't tell you <laughs> the last time they did it. But on these here, we'll go ahead and service that. Then we'll realign every trailer. So trailers are no different than passenger vehicles. They can get knocked out of alignment, whether it's a curb, whether it's a pothole, uh, it does not matter. I mean, things do happen, we don't mean to, sometimes we don't know it, but it can knock a trailer out of alignment and you'll get bad tire wear and you'll start blowing tires. I mean, we've had customers say, yeah, I'm putting a new set of tires on about every 5,000 miles. You shouldn't have to do that if you're at least putting adequate tires underneath a trailer. So with that being said, we can realign the trailer, make sure it's running down the road straight for you. 
And then the other thing we're gonna look at is those safety items. Again, if it needs brakes, we'll go ahead and do the bearings. Again, kind of like those oil changes that I talked about on used vehicles. The other thing we're gonna look at is tires. So this is an interesting one. So this trailer hasn't seen a lot of use, but if I look at these tires, there's still a lot of tread to them. But this trailer is gonna get a brand new set of tires. And the reason why, that one's upside down. Let me see if I can find you a better one. Yeah, right here. After these DOT codes, if you go look, that 2917, these tires were manufactured the 29th week of 2017. So we want a tire five years or newer. We want them all to match. We want them all to be good tread. And then if you start studying this, a lot of people just kind of go straight to the tread and that's what they look at. But if you start studying the sidewall of this, this trailer, you can start seeing the cracks. And that more than likely is just from sun. Probably this, this trailer was sitting on, you know, the sun got the majority of the passenger side of this and sun is just tough on tires. So just because this trailer just got here um, and we're working through the, the shop, but if we look at that tread, go, wow, there's a lot of tread. Those are good heavy duty tires. But once you start inspecting them, you go, this trailer needs a new set of tires. So we'll put a brand new set on the ground for you. They'll all match, they'll all be adequate. Uh, ply rating for this. These are 17.5 aluminum wheels. I can see that the previous customer probably found some Alcoa caps to go on it. These are not Alcoa rims. I just want to point that out. Um, but those are just the caps that they had probably found uh, to put on this trailer. But 17 five inch wheels, 8,000 pound rubber torsion, Dexter axles, electric brakes on this. Um, we will get an official weight on this trailer. So that way you can have that information when you're going to looking at a tow vehicle and what you would need from a capability standpoint in order to run this trailer itself. All right, so as we get to the back, dual doors, since it's eight foot wide, we do 50-50 rear doors. So it gives you a nice opening to the tack area, nice big open area going to the horses, folding rear tack on this, so I can break that out of the way if I want. On this left-hand door, you got some hooks, the kick mat on that door to protect that as well, brush tray for your smaller miscellaneous items. Then on your saddle rack, you have three tier saddle racks, the pads themselves, and then three blanket poles. You can change the sequence if you want. You can spread these up or down any way you want. Uh, that is the nice thing is these are flexible. They're not fixed. So it's not, that's where that saddle pad has to be. We can adjust those if we want there. Um, but again, if you wanted to take this out, you could take it out, fold that down. Uh, maybe you want to throw some four wheelers, something like that in this trailer. It, it does work. Um, from a versatility standpoint by having the flexibility of having a folding rear tack. Maybe your horse prefers a rear ramp. Maybe your four-wheeler prefers a rear ramp to load when you go to do that. We can actually remove that rubber bumper and put a fold up, uh, you know, over the doors type of a ramp there. So there's some things we can do after the fact to these trailers as far as that's concerned. Now, as you get into the stall area, I mentioned worm flooring. So this trailer would have came standard with rubber mats, but those were deleted and, and worm flooring was put in. So it's a permanent rubber mat. It's, it's unpenetrable, so urine can't get down to the aluminum floor itself, so it protects that. But these are awesome. We, we like putting worm flooring in a lot of trailers just because we can power wash them out. We don't have to pull the mats. Wrestling those mats is never a fun gig. Um, so cleaning this out is a lot easier. Just muck out your solids nose it up a little bit, come in through your pass-through door, open up your backs, just power wash it out. That's simple. Airflow dividers. So a lot more airflow within this trailer itself by having that versus the solid. Um, padded dividers, stud divider at stall number one. So again, this one here, you could actually use as additional storage in this stall area if you're only hauling one or two head of horses. Uh, maybe it's some feed, maybe it's some shavings, maybe it's some buckets, cooler, those type of items. And then again, you can utilize it as a mudroom. But if you are hauling three, you need to separate somebody, it's nice to have this uh, at stall number one. And then your partial divider behind it, it'll lay against that uh, folding rear tack. We can shut the rear doors if we want to, um, but we like additional 
lengthen that back stall just so we have a solid divider versus a telescoping. There are times that it, a trailer might call for a telescoping divider, but if we can eliminate those moving parts, it does help. The other cool thing is the springs on these. I mean, this is a used trailer and these springs have held up. It's wanting to pull them to driver's side. I don't have to hold these open, loading and unloading horses. And then they've added uh, just a piece of a rubber that goes across the bottom. More than likely, they were using this first stall as storage and they just didn't want that little bit of a gap underneath it. Uh, so that's probably why that's there. LED lights in here. Those are on a switch at the back. Two-way roof fence so we can create a lot more airflow throughout this trailer. If you notice, we have drop windows on tail side as well. So. I'll show you the drops on head side in a minute, but we have drops head, airflow dividers, drops on hip, so we get a lot more airflow throughout this two-way roof vents. But the most important piece is that roof. So that is an insulated roof, and that is standard on every single Cimarron. Doesn't matter if it's a little bumper pull, doesn't matter if it's a big LQ like this, they're all gonna have that roof. And it makes a world of difference from a temperature control standpoint in this stall area, about 20% cooler versus aluminum sheeted roofs. Uh, that makes a big difference in these summer months. We've had an odd one here um, in Colorado with all the rain we've had this summer. I mean, it feels like fall right now, but as it does warm up, we get in those 95, 100 degree days, traveling in the summertime, that will keep our horses so much cooler versus those aluminum sheeted roofs. The other cool thing is it takes substantial hail. <laughs> We've had some of that here this year. We do have a hail sale going on on some, on some aluminum sheeted trailers right now, but our Cimarron roofs, they made it through it. So it takes big hail to do anything. It takes 150 pounds per square inch. It's a honeycomb design, it's a half inch thick. So it gains a lot of strength by having that there. But as you can see, as you get in this stall area, I mean, you don't see a lot of wear and tear on this trailer. So again, I don't like the term like new, lightly used for sure on this trailer itself. So let me go ahead and shut these back doors because on your left hand door here, you are gonna have your ladder that will go up to that hay pod that we mentioned. And also at the back right is gonna be the generator box. So the generator's been rolling this whole time. So it is an Onan 4000 gas. Uh, they are nice and quiet. You will hear that hum maybe in the living quarters, um, but for the most part, you really don't even hear them that often. But this easy angle ladder, rather than a bolt on where we got to climb straight up the side of this, try carrying a, a feed bag or some buckets up the side of a trailer with one hand as you have those in your other. When we have these, this easy angle ladder, it makes that transition so easy. You can go up and down these extremely um, with your hands full, extremely easy. Uh, again, transition going up and down. We can add these actually two trailers after the fact. So if you have a bolt on and you want to add that, we can do that piece to it. It doesn't even have to be a Cimarron. If you want that, our parts and service department can help you out by putting one of those on your trailer. It does make a difference. Here's your light switches. So you've got a load light at the back. You've got load lights on each side. You've got all those interior lights. Everything's on an individual switch. So you can just hit them on and off and just do different sections if you want. But there's a good look at that. Uh, that hay pot up there, easily fit 10 to 12 big bales up there, uh, which is really nice. You can throw other items in there. It'll seal it, protecting it from any moisture, uh, protecting that investment on your hay. It's not getting wet as you're traveling. So here on driver's side, stall number one, there's our escape door. It has a drop window in it. There it is going right into that very first uh, box stall area. Again, you can use it as a mudroom going in through that pass-through door. And then drops on two and three, the big jail bars with drops. Big mass to these windows, a lot of framework. So they hold up over time. The jail bars fold down as well, uh, but it'll protect horses from getting their heads out and traveling. And then you've got manger storage as well. So two doors since it's a three horse, um, and we have that escape door at number one. But extra storage in here, there's some LED lights in there as well. Those you'll actually have to turn on from the actual light itself, um, but you've got some light in there. And then at this very back, you'll notice that's actually our fuel cell. So we need to 
we need to have that fuel capacity on board to run it. Here's our fill, which is nice because it's on driver's side. Fuel your pickup up, pull up to the pump, top this off with gas. Um, some things to keep with you, in my opinion, is some sea foam. Keep a bottle of that. Occasionally put a splash of that in there. These are small engines. So you want to use the fuel. You don't want that fuel to sit and get old. It'll gum up those carburetors so fast. Sea foam will help, or, or an additive like that will help keep things clean and functioning. Uh, even in the winter time, if you're sitting at home, not using this trailer and it's got one of these on boards, go out there once a month, fire it up, put a load on it and let it run for about an hour. Let that oil get up to temperature, but also burn off that old gas for you and just keep things moving uh, rather than sitting idle. Big doors, everything's key to like on this. So our LQ door, our drop windows, our back doors, manger doors, everything is key to like. Uh, so we can go ahead and lock those up with one key rather than finding a million different ones to go ahead and lock items up. So again, your drop window is a touch smaller just because of the framework on that door, but you can get a lot of airflow throughout the trailer by having those drops. Again, that insulated roof, those two-way roof vents, and the mainly, it, it makes a big difference by having those drops on the hip wall versus bus windows. Then there's a good look at that slide out that we had. You have the awning topper on it to help protect that as well. Uh, but wow, what a, what a really nice and well cared for, you know, used 2018 Cimarron. So this trailer is available today. I'll give you the stock number on it. Again, 2018, it's a 15 and a half foot with a slide out, three horse onboard generator, hay pod. Stock number is 5U230860. We do take trade-ins. So if you're looking to upgrade, maybe even downsize, maybe you got a big LQ that you want to get a little bit smaller. You got a four horse, five horse. Hey, I only need a three horse now or a bigger short wall. And I want to kind of, you know, get into something a little bit smaller. We can help you out there. Financing's available and also delivery. So we could potentially deliver this to you. So give us a call. Anybody on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in and have a good day.